What's up, YouTube? Joe Banofsky here from JNS Entertainment in Madison, Connecticut. I'm just sitting here in my office, uh, keeping my hands clean. And I thought I'd post a quick video. Um, I think I'm going to do a bunch of these short videos that um, just either dispel myths or um, teach somebody how to do something that they didn't know how to do. What I have on my desk here are three cords. This one is a common one. You guys have seen this. It's what comes with most of these lavalier style microphones. Um, and I want to show you the difference between using a cord like this on a microphone system versus using a cord like this to patch, say, an iPhone or an Android phone or an iPod or an iPad into a mixing console. With this cord, that would be a big no-no, and I'll explain why. This cord is a specialty cord that I made. Um, same thickness as most of those style. It's just very long. Um, so a lot of guys who use column speakers, whether it be a JBL Eon 1, Pro, whether it be the Turbo Sound, whether it be the Evolve, um, and they're doing using them for wedding ceremonies and they want to put this thing on top so it's up in the air to get better signal. Um, it looks kind of wonky when you have something like this and then another XLR to drop down. So I've made a bunch of these, uh, which makes life a whole lot easier for having this on top of your array and plugging this down into the bottom. And lastly, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about this cord. This is a custom made cord by me. This takes the place of a Y cable. This cord is made specifically to plug in to an iPad or an iPod and to plug into a single mixing console channel. Um, in a moment, I am going to turn this camera off and I'm going to give you a close up view of each and show you the differences. And then in a future video, if you want, I will show you how to make it. Okay. So this is the cable that comes with a Sennheiser wireless microphone pack. This connector, many of you know it as a mini headphone connector. In the professional audio world, this would be known as a TRS, a tip ring sleeve. And this would be an eighth inch version rather than a quarter inch, quarter inch version of a tip ring sleeve. So that's very different from a headphone connector, very different. And I'm going to show you how. So if we look at the other end of this cable, many of you know that an XLR is not a stereo cable. You have a hot, you have a cold, and you have a shield. All XLR, all XLR cable is shielded, and that's to prevent noise interference. So on the inside of this cable, if you were to take it apart, you would see your, this black is just, that black right there is just shrink wrap over the shielded cable that comes out of here. But you would see a hot, a cold, and a shield. So there's no left and right in here. It's just hot and cold. So that's a, that's a mono channel as opposed to a headphone jack, which is a stereo channel. So, if we were to look at your typical, after I put this back together, if we were to identify this as a headphone jack, it would be identified as tip, right channel, sleeve, left channel, or ring rather, left channel, and sleeve common ground for the two channels. So in a headphone scenario, you are sending the left channel, the right channel, and a common ground down to the end of the wire. So Rain published an article, and I'll put a link to it, as to why not why, in other words, why a Y cable is bad. Um, and that could be the topic of a whole nother video, but um, you're never supposed to use a Y cable on audio equipment to sum two channels into one, ever. 
very bad for the output transformers on the piece of equipment because you're, you're just tying two signals together and you're changing the impedance going down that wire by tying those two channels together. This is a cable I've made that solves that problem. So in this scenario, this is made to go into an iPod or an iPad or any other audio device. And this is right, left, and common ground. So this is where it gets interesting. On this side, what we've done, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but in here, you can see how that's fat and you could kind of see at the very tip those are two resistors. So I've taken the hot and the cold, or what would be left and right, and they've got, I believe it's 10, ke uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors on each one. So in here, buried in here, I've got them soldered to the end and individually shrink wrapped. And then they are connected to the hot here. Okay. Then, and this is going to be difficult to see. There is, let's see if I get the camera to focus. There is a resistor. You can barely see it in there. And it goes from here to here. And it wraps around to here. And then we've got our shield over here. What this does, what this cable does, is it perfectly sums the left and the right channel at the proper resistance to be able to plug this into a standard microphone mixer channel without causing any damage or any audio gain loss to uh, both the signal or the device. So. This is the cable I use. Uh, let's say in a DJ scenario, I want to plug an iPad. Can't find that keyway. I want to plug an iPad into a mixing console. This is the cable I would use for that. Another potential use for this cable. Let's say you do more than just DJing and you are a um, AV type guy. You can use this cable to plug a laptop into a mixing board. Let's say you were a sound technician and you had a keyboardist that had an eighth inch out on his keyboard and you didn't have a DI box to patch that into your snake. You could use this cable for that without causing any damage. So you'd, you would turn a stereo signal into a mono signal. You wouldn't damage the piece of audio equipment sending and you would have freed up one channel on your mixing board because you're plugging in one channel. So that's the topic of this video. Um, if you'd like to see me build this vid build a cable like this and teach you how to solder and which parts are needed and how to put it together, leave me a comment in the comments box and I'll do that. If you'd like to see me make one of these cables um, and show the parts in the, the diagram and how I did that, uh, leave a comment for that. Um, and as always, if you're not a member here on um, my channel, I would love it if you please subscribe and if you hit that bell or certainly give me a thumbs up so that other DJs and sound technicians um, can see this content. Thank you very much.